friends, welcome back to my kitchen. It is Becky at Acre Homestead. I'm excited you're here with me today. Today we are going to be doing a recipe in honor of Heather at the Needy Homestead. Because she has inspired me over the years, I just want to show her a little bit of love by making her recipe. So this is a no soak canning method for dried beans. I do have a pressure canner. These are gonna be pressure canned. And this is a rebel canning method. If you read in the ball canning cookbook, which is my favorite canning cookbook, it does require you to cook the beans first before canning them. But I'm gonna go ahead and try this because I've done quite a bit of research on it and I feel comfortable doing this. But please do your own research before you just follow along on my video with me. So today I'm gonna do one canning load of dried beans. I have pinto beans here in my bulk bucket. If you're interested in how I store my bulk foods, go ahead and check out, I've got a video on where I'm organizing my pantry. I have seven quart jars here, which is what fits in my Presto pressure canner. I will link my pressure canner and all my canning equipment down below if you're interested in checking that out. The recipe calls for a scant cup of beans per quart. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those in here so we can get them washed up. I'm gonna look through and find any rocks or any shrivelly ones and take out the little broken ones so that I can have the best beans to go in my canning jars. I'm gonna put a scant cup in each one of these jars. Have a pot of boiling water here. I'm going to fill each one of these jars with enough water to leave one inch headspace. So I did run out of boiling water for this one, so I have the kettle going and I will make sure that I top that one off before we continue with that one. So I'm going to debubble them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe the rims of each one of these jars with a little bit of distilled vinegar. Now when you debubbled, if you lost a little bit of water, go ahead and top it off with water if you need to. And this floating bean is a little bit wrinkly, so I'm gonna take these two floating beans out because I think they have seen better days. And I'm gonna re-wipe those jar lids and then we'll go ahead and get a lid on each one of these. I have this in a little bit of warm water here. I'm doing very plain beans. There's nothing in these, not even salt. I want to have the freedom to cook with these how I want and season them up how I want when I open the jar. I'm sure that in the future, once I get um, more comfortable with canning beans, I'll do a bunch of different things like baked beans and chili beans and things like that. But for now, I wanna just do a very plain bean. Then the rings go on. So it's time to get these jars in the canner. This is a Presto pressure canner. It's a 21 quart Presto pressure canner. And I bought this last summer and I've been super happy with it. It's a very affordable option for a pressure canner. And it also duels as a huge stock pot. I made my salsas in this pot last year because I was able to do quadruple batches instead of having to do multiple um, batches on the stove in my eight quart Dutch oven. I could use this 21 quart pressure canner. So it's definitely an awesome, affordable option. I one day would love to get an All-American, but for now, this is working really well for me. I've done chicken broth and potatoes in here, and then we're adding to the list beans. I have three quarts of water in here. Please read the directions of your pressure can yarn on how to use it. I'm gonna get this water up to a little bit of a simmer before I put the jars in. All the jars are in there and I have it closed. I now have it turned on to a medium heat, and when steam starts shooting out of this vent, then I'm gonna let it vent for 10 minutes. Now that it's been venting for 10 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and put the weight on it. I'm gonna have my dial on my pressure canner go up to 11 pounds of pressure. So we have reached pressure, so now I'm gonna set a timer for 90 minutes. I just turned the stove completely off because the timer went off, and now I'm going to just let it depressurize naturally. I'm not going to do anything except let it sit here until that dial reaches zero. They are out of the canner and they are still boiling. Oh, um, it just sealed. 
So they are still boiling because they are extremely hot inside. The overall process was super easy. I think they turned out really well. The true test is when I open them up and try them. But it was so easy that I actually have another seven jars that I'm gonna go ahead and put in the canner and just have them on my pantry shelf. I wanna say a huge thank you to Heather at the Needy Homestead for giving me the courage and the inspiration to do this. She has a ton of great videos. She has she does a ton of baking. So if you guys wanna learn how to bake bread, you should definitely go check her channel out. I will link her channel and the GoFundMe account for her down below. Thank you for hanging out with me in my kitchen today. I hope you guys have a great evening. I can't wait to see you guys next time. And if you would like this video, I'd really appreciate it. And if you wanna start a conversation, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Thanks guys, I hope you have a great day, bye.